Hey everyone, I'm Jake with Newmark, and if you're brand new to the world of DJing, this episode of Mix Academy is for you. I'm gonna teach you how to mix in three easy steps. Step number one of mixing, match your tempos. You'll see on the Mixstream Pro here, I have two tracks loaded up. On the left deck, we have a track playing at 103 beats per minute. That's down here, you can see it says 103. That is the BPM or the tempo of the track. That's basically saying that is the speed that the track is playing back. The next song I'm loading in on the right deck that I will mix in is at 100 beats per minute. So we need to get this number 100 to match 103. I chose a track with 100 BPM tempo because it's gonna be easy to explain how the pitch slider works, which is right here on the side of the deck. This is a percentage change slider that will adjust the speed of the track. And right now I have the pitch slider set to plus or minus 4%. So that means this tempo slider will go all the way down to minus 4% by go sliding it up or it'll add 4% sliding down. Now what I need to do is just add 3% to this track so that it matches 103 beats per minute. So I'm gonna slide the slider down to plus three. And we're pretty close. There, plus 3%. Now you'll notice that the tempo says 103. That's where we need to be. So that exactly matches the tempo of this track. Now that we have the tempos matched, the next step is to mix in at the right time. So to understand where to mix in your track, we need, first need to talk about song structure. So most modern music is in 4-4 time. So that means there's four beats per a measure, or you could say a measure or a bar. So how the structure would work is you have four beats per bar or measure, and then usually those are grouped into chunks of four bars. So, you know, 16 beats at a time. Typically in most music, you'll find that there'll be a intro, usually 32 beats. There'll be a verse number one after the intro, usually 32 beats. And there'll be a chorus after that, which is 32 beats, followed by verse number two, 32 beats, followed by chorus number two, 32 beats. See the pattern here? 32 beats, there's usually something major happening in the song every 32 beats. With exceptions, of course, but that's a general rule to follow. For example, this track we're playing on this side, Levitating, it has a 32 beat intro, which is eight bars. It has a verse number one of 32 beats. And it has a pre-chorus, which is before the actual chorus. The pre-chorus is four bars, or 16 beats. Then the chorus starts, and the chorus is eight bars, or 32 beats. So the goal really is to mix in the intro of the new song as soon as the chorus starts of the playing song. So that way, when the chorus ends, verse number one of the new song begins. So let's illustrate that. Let's count this one out. We'll count out levitating a little bit. You'll see the structure. At the beginning, 32 beat intro. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four. Here comes verse number one. If you wanna run away with me, I know a galaxy and I can take you for a ride. Three. Fourth bar. Another set. Here comes the pre-chorus. One. Two. And remember there's only four of these bars. Almost ready for the chorus. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Four. Here comes the next set of four bars. One. Two. Three. Four. And here comes verse number two. Now what we're gonna do is mix in the new track starting at the beginning of the first chorus of the playing track. So since this track has a 32 beat intro, it'll align perfectly. We've already matched the tempo, so we know it's gonna align rhythmically, but then it's gonna phrase properly because as soon as this chorus ends, verse number one will start on this deck and then we can fade it over completely. 
to get to that point, let's go back to that uh, pre-chorus area. So we know that that is four bars. So we'll count out four bars and then we know to mix this in. Now it's worth noting, a pre-chorus isn't in every song. Just remember that the chorus is the part that gets repeated usually two or three times in a song, and that is typically 32 beats. Just listen for the chorus, it'll be easy to identify, and it's really important to understand your music ahead of time, or at least have an understanding of what the song structure is, so you know when to mix in. Let's get to the mix. We're gonna play this pre-chorus, and as soon as the actual chorus starts, we're gonna hit play on deck two, and that 32 beat intro is gonna start. We're gonna keep the volumes up on both decks as we mix. Okay, that pre-chorus is gonna start soon. All right, here we go, pre-chorus starting, four bars. Two, three, all right, almost ready, four. All right, four more bars, I'm gonna fade over. One, two, three, four. Verse number one starts the next track. Step number three of mixing is adjustments. One of those adjustments is adjusting the pitch temporarily. So we would call that a pitch bend. And we would use that when we maybe miss our drop. Uh, we started the track we're mixing maybe like a little too early or a little too late and the beats aren't lining up. So we know that the tempos are matched because we already did that adjustment at the beginning. So we know we just need to temporarily speed up the track or slow it down to nudge everything in place so that everything aligns. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to that pre-chorus of levitating and uh, I'm gonna start the new track just a hair too short. And then I'm gonna nudge it in place using the outside ring of the jog wheel. Or alternatively, I could use the pitch bend buttons, plus or minus. All right, we're gonna get ready for that pre-chorus again. Here it is. Two. Three. All right, four more beats. I'm gonna start this one late. Oops. All right, now I'm gonna speed it up. All right, I got it back in line. Same thing if I was off, I can use the pitch bend button. And I saved the mix by pitch bending. So another adjustment we can make would be adjusting the EQ as we mix. Now I typically like to cut the bass of uh, the chorus while I'm bringing in the next track. And so I'm hinting um, of the baseline of the incoming track. So the audience is thinking, okay, something's coming up, what is it? And it creates a little drama and a little excitement to the dance floor. So let's go back to that pre-chorus again. As I start mixing at the beginning of this 32 beat chorus with this 32 beat intro, I'm gonna kill the bass in the chorus and leave the bass in the intro. So that way we'll have the bass of the new song combined with the chorus of the current song to create a little drama and excitement on the dance floor. Okay, so we're gonna go back to that pre-chorus again. Remember the pre-chorus and this one's four bars. Two. Three. All right, I'm gonna kill the bass when I mix in. And now when I mix up, I'm gonna add an effect on the chorus. I'll do an echo. And effects are another great adjustment you can make to the mix. Just uh, add whatever you like. On the Mixer Pro we have echo, flanger, delay, and phaser. Echo is a great effect just to add on the chorus right at that last beat, and then that way that vocal trails off as the new verse starts in the new song. It's worth noting also on the Mixstream Pro, the effects are post fader. So that means you can engage the effect with the volume fader up, and then as you bring it down, the effect will still trail off. So for example. Another really great fun adjustment you can make is using the filter knobs. So we have a combined low pass and high pass filter. 
how that works is if I turn it to the high pass filter, you only hear the high frequencies of the track. If I turn it to the low pass filter side, you only hear the low frequencies. So low pass, it means it's passing through the low frequencies only. So what I would do is let's go back to that pre-chorus again. I'm gonna do a high pass filter as I mix this one in. Here's that pre-chorus. All right, here comes our chorus. So this song is playing, but it's, the uh, filter knob is engaged. And so I'm gonna bring this filter down and bring this one back to the zero point. And there you have it. So using the filter knobs is a great fun way to add some flavor to your mix. Adjusting the EQ, you know, primarily bass is the one I adjust on that one. And then adding effects. It really just makes the mix your own. You can personalize it and really just have fun with it. And that's it. That's how you DJ in three easy steps. Match your tempo, mix at the right time, and make adjustments. Really, it's all about finding your own sound, being creative, and having fun with music. That's what DJing is all about. If you have additional questions regarding DJing, mixing, or equipment, just let us know in the comment section below and we'll do our best to help you out. I'm Jake with Newmark. Thank you for watching.